we're going to uh, move on here. And speaking, of course, of the uh, build season coming up as we were talking uh, w with Ben and Griffin, uh, can't wait to talk about Destination Deep Space and all the cool designs all of you have going up. Uh, and we do have a feature team of the week uh, that we want to show a video for and tell you a little bit about. But before we do that, uh, I want to check in uh, with, uh, of course, Ben, we just talked a little bit about uh, in regards to 225, but we'd love to hear more from you. And then, uh, Christine, what's going on with uh, 125 The Neutrons and how are you approaching this year's game challenge? Yeah, so um, obviously I am not the mechanical mentor or robot mentor, but from I what mean, I've seen... Obviously. Because I, I live live the non-tech life. Right, Somebody's got to do it. Um, so luckily, so this is the first time in 21 years that the Neutrons have been in a new lab space. We're actually housed out of one of our high schools now, which is actually pretty awesome. We're able to be in a single room as a team, which before was never a possibility. So I'm actually able to see the progression of prototyping and, you know, at least be around and involved when, you know, strategy and stuff's going on, which has been really cool. So um, our team is still in like the prototyping phase. I think they've nailed down a drivetrain. I have no idea what it is, to be honest with you, but there were a lot of uh, game manipulating or game piece manipulations going on this past weekend. Like students were really starting to, to mess around with game pieces and see how they would react to certain prototypes and different materials because i mean the game pieces or at least the the hatch panels are just so different this year they're bizarre um and it's it's been pretty cool to see the students really fool around with them and try to figure them out um but i honestly have no idea what the robot is going to look like or uh or what's going on, but there were some flying game pieces this weekend, which I would assume is good progress. So Christine will be the first one to spill the beans on everything 125 is doing uh, here live on First Updates. Absolutely. Now. Thank you, yep. Christine. Yep. <laughs> uh, ben, how about yourself? Anything else you want to kind of chime in, in regards to Destination Deep Space? And of course, chat, let us know what you're thinking about Destination Deep Space. Take us at First Updates now. Yeah, sure. Um, drive's about half done. The uh cad overall of the entire robots probably about 90 percent. i want to say uh there's still a couple details that we need to throw in there um yeah we, we do quick on the cad we try to i mean we're, we're a heavy cots team right so it, 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 we try to minimize the custom fab to only what you have to custom fab and uh cad it as fast as possible because we're limited on machining resources for how fast we can get that done so we got to get going um yeah, so the drive's half built about right now. The um, the business end, the prototype business end things, if you know what I mean, they're probably the fourth or fifth iteration at this point. Um, so we're we're kind of almost finalized with those. Um, yeah, I, I think I mean in general we're probably we're about a day and a half behind where we want to be. Uh, so we're we're, mm. we're it's it's going good. The the robot's probably going to do. The same stuff the RA3D robot did, plus a little bit more. So um, there, yeah, there's a couple other a things copy, we're trying say, to huh? shove in there. No. Oh, no. <laughs> not making a copy at all. No. And do you, I, I'm talking about functionality wise. Yes, of course. Yeah. And uh, Ben, so do you guys submit for like chairmans and other stuff too? Like, where is your team on the non tech front? I'm curious. Yeah, we're. we're uh, not as focused on that, to be quite honest, at least at mm -hmm. this point, it, it's, we, we try to, you know, make sure we're always doing good, try to be the mini Mart for, for everybody. When we go to comps, try to, you know, make sure that a, a, everyone that we've got around has the resources that they need, but we're basically everything for chairman's except not worried about submitting for the award. <laughs> so, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, I don't, that, that's kind of the attitude that we've got right now. Maybe it'll change in the future, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, we try to be like, you know, the one that everyone's going to want to work with uh, and, you know, try to be friendly to everybody, but we're not worried about submitting for the award. If someone yeah. else can win the award. That's fine with us. <laughs> that's exactly how uh, the neutrons were until I ended up joining the team mm -hmm. again. And that was like the one thing I was responsible for. So no, I'm just curious, like where people are at with their submission at this point. Cause my students are like, are we on track? I was like, it's your track to be on. Like, <laughs> <laughs> are you on track? So just curious. Cause if you have that much CAD done already, I was like, wow, what else do they have done? You know? That's well, pretty <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I mean, CAD is like what I did when I was a student, right. For, uh, on that side. So it's kind of, 
you know, the best practices kind of filter through over time. We really only have, you know, 1.5 students catting too. It's all singularly focused through one particular individual who's just really, really fast at it. So that's, that's kind of the approach that we take. Efficient, I suppose, huh? Yeah. (laughs) Um, something I want to ask before we get into our our feature team and kind of learn about what they're doing for the week is uh, as we look in the build season here, uh, you know, people are, of course, uh, chat ever so helpful posts, the greatest things I'll tell you. But uh, as we look into, they kind of inspired me for an idea as we look in the teams like your 254s and 2056s and other tier one teams out there, uh, are they going to be doing something that maybe we're not catching on to? Is there something like extra special weird that we're going to see? And it's just going to be like, holy crap. Why didn't we think of something like that? I suppose we would have thought about it, but mm-hmm. like, like to me, I, I look at it as like, I, I would love to see some way where um, if I, I look at uh, snow problems, RA3D robot, where they're, they are able to kind of climb onto level three, right? I'd love to see a way to have like other robots somehow grapple onto that or something like that. Like you could cheesecake another robot where that robot has some sort of mechanism that then climbs on top of that robot. Some, something ridiculous where like, is it going to be possible to get 36 points on level three? Oh man, I don't know. When I I feel like over the last few years, at least from what I've seen, it's not necessarily like the the like oh my god, how like yeah. how did I not think of that? It's just like the most uh, like elegant and efficiently designed machine that does things really really well. Like the Poof's like twenty, what was it like twenty fourteen robot? That robot was like so simple yet so Mm -hmm. complicated and did everything like it it did it really well and i feel like their robots are they're not like oh my gosh like i how could i not have thought of that like design or whatever it's just like the most simple well done way of doing like the most obvious thing ben what are your thoughts i I think we're gonna see something that none of us have thought of here um that that's that's going to come out from the the tier one powerhouses, right? It, there's always there's always some cool idea that comes out that even if it's not um, necessarily the most efficient way of doing it, like uh, you know forks for last year, like the robot wrangler, right? There's going to be some cool thing like that that comes out that's like, why don't you just grab onto someone's bumper? Um, mm-hmm. I think on the level three the level three climbs, what a minimum, see people drop some nemesis wings, drop an underdrive train, and drive up. You know, I think that that at a minimum. We'll see some teams that that do that sort of that sort of thing to hold three robots at level three. The the problem is like if you do that, it's really hard to fit in say an internal disc intake. So then you have sure. to yes, have, have these that. kind of trade offs. Yeah, that can you do both of those? Are you going to do both of those? What are you going to do? So um, mm-hmm. th- there's going to be some some interesting stuff, and I don't think all the top end robots are going to end up being the same robot. Mm-hmm. That's an interesting thought. It'd be cool to see how it kind of uh. Uh, pans out over, over the weeks. And as, as we start to see more and more rots uh, revealed more on, by the way, robot reveal in a little bit as well. Uh, but let's take a look. Uh, I got a, actually, I had an opportunity uh, to sit down uh, with my old team, uh, 2826 Wave Robotics this past weekend. We're going to ha- be having a uh, host uh, from around uh, all, all, all of our different first hosts or some of our different first hosts are going to be essentially interviewing uh, teams around them. So we can kind of get a local uh, flair of flavor of what, is going on, what teams are thinking. Uh, so I did the first one here with Wave Robotics uh, out of Oshkosh, Wisconsin here. So let's take a look and uh, find out how they're tackling Destination Deep Space. Hey, I'm uh, stopping by with my old local team here, team number 2826 Wave Robotics, uh, checking to see uh, the reactions to Destination Deep Space and maybe some of the uh, features that they're working on, some of the ideas that they have going on, and some of their prototypes that they have as well too. So I'm here with uh, Ryan, who's a senior on Wave Robotics. And uh, Ryan, I want to start out by asking you, uh, Destination Deep Space has come out. This is your fourth year, right, as a student. So you've seen a few games before. What are your initial reactions to Destination Deep Space? Um, I think this is a very interesting game compared to uh, the last three years. Um, uh, in And there's a lot of different strategies about going about this game um, and different robot designs that can be accomplished. And there's a lot more than just uh, one or two tasks that you can do. There's, uh, you can put balls into the rocket, there's hatches you can pick up, and uh, also climbing on level three, which is quite a challenge. Yeah, definitely that is a challenge this year. One thing I want to ask you about too is the sandstorm this year. So it's a little bit different than the autonomous, right? So when you first saw that come out and then as you had a little bit of time to digest that, what are your thoughts on the sandstorm period and the challenge that might be associated with it? Um, I really think that's 
an interesting way to start the game. Um, there'll, there will be teams who choose to do autonomous and then teams who choose to drive based on ability levels of the team. Um, so I think I'm, I'm very excited about it because it's something different than the normal autonomous mode. Where, where are you thinking about right now? When you, you said some teams might choose to drive with a camera, some teams might do full autonomous. What is Wave thinking about to start out with? Um, right now, we're unsure, but um, I'm thinking we'll do a combo of each depending on how well um, our uh, programming period goes. So. So I want to talk a little bit about, you have uh, some intake wheels here, right? Um, so why don't you tell me a little bit about these, uh, kind of some of your thought process behind them and uh, what you're looking at uh, doing in regards to game manipulation. Um, so these are actually our I old uh, intake wheels from last year. Um, and um, we would like to pick up the balls off the floor. And then also after discussion, we'd like to pick up the hatches from the floor. So instead of having two different mechanisms, we're kind of trying to integrate it into one. Um, so right on the bottom here, we have these um, cool parabola-shaped things, um, and they will help us pick up the hatch from the floor, and then the wheels are for the balls. So let's take a look at this uh, CAD run you have here a little bit. So this is kind of showing off a little bit of what's going on. So tell me uh, a bit more about the CAD drawing and, and where you're kind of looking at uh, moving forward from this next step here. Um, so um, – it's very similar to what I just showed you. Um, you have your wheels right here and a hatch and then those weird shaped things right there. Um, and this is just a prototype as of now. So we'll be cutting this out today and then hope to test it. So, so the last thing I want to ask you about is you mentioned that you're really excited in regards to the climbing this year as well too. What are Wave's thoughts in regards to climbing? Are you looking at going level three? Are you going to maybe even support other robots? Level two, what's kind of the first thing on your mind? Um, yeah, so level three is definitely on our priority list. Um, we're still thinking of different ideas of how to get up there. Um, and we'll continue to, to develop those ideas better because we really want to uh, get up there ourselves um, to guarantee that ranking point at the end of the match. Great points. And Ryan, thank you so much for uh, checking with us. Uh, best of luck to 2026 this season. We can't wait to see what you guys come out with. Thanks, Ryan. Well, so that was the uh, interview with uh, 2026 uh, Wave Robotics. And uh, thanks uh, to them and Ryan, of course, for taking the time to talk to us and tell us a little about what's going on uh, with their thought process and strategy. And once again, Chad, we'd love to hear uh, what you think about things like the Sandstorm uh, and other aspects of Destination Deep Space. So make sure you hit at first updates now uh, in chat. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.